Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now, last week uh, I took a look at this. That's the Zotec or Zoe ZT702S oscilloscope and multimeter. And at the time I made that video, I did actually uh, say that I might uh, do something a little bit more in depth with it if if that was of any interest to people. And one or two people have come back and asked me to do that. So that's what this video is. So let's go straight to the bench and see how it works when it's put through its paces. Okay, so the purpose of this video then is, um, well actually it's to show how to use um, test equipment. In this case it's the Zoe ZT702S. I've been um, requested to do a bit more on it, so the plan is to actually um, uh, use a working circuit to demonstrate that. So I've built something here. Um, don't propose to give you a schematic, it's um, all stuff that you've seen before. But what I've got coming in here, these two yellow wires, is I've got an AC supply, I've got a bridge rectifier, I've got a smoothing capacitor, and then here I've got a, a 7805 voltage regulator with its attendant um, capacitors as recommended by the um, spec sheet. And that block forms a 5 volt power supply. Here I've got a 555 set up uh, as, a, as an oscillator and the purpose of the circuit here is to then uh, modify the square wave output uh, and produce something which approximates to a sine wave. Now I've got all the various bits of the circuit disconnected at the moment so we can hopefully uh, um, uh, see the meter in action. So that's what I intend to do. So I'm going to now switch on and it boots into scope, so I'm going to uh, straight away go to meter, like so. And it automatically goes into DC volts, so we'll just change that to AC volts, because the first thing I want to check is uh, what kind of voltage I've got on the input. So we'll just do that, and you can see there we've got about 8 volts RMS AC uh, coming into the bridge rectifier. So now I'll hop on back onto DC. Uh, you can see there, and we'll see what we've got uh, on the output side of the uh, of the bridge rectifier. I need to worry about my um, polarity now. It didn't matter before, but it does now. So let's see what we've got on the output of the bridge. And you can see we've got about, about just over six and a half volts. Uh, DC on the other half of the bridge there. So if I now connect that um, supply to the smoothing capacitor like so and I've now brought into the circuit the 5 volt regulator uh, let's just see if that makes any difference to the 6 and a bit volts and you can see actually it does uh, and we'll look at why that is uh, in a moment. It's quite significant. It's actually brought the voltage up by about 3 volts um, if that's surprising you, then we'll talk about why later, but uh, if not, then I'm sure you've already worked it out. So now what we'll do, we'll look at the output of the voltage regulator here. It's a 7805 in conventional mode, so hopefully we've got something pretty close to 5 volts there, 4.993 volts coming out. So that, that's clearly working okay. So now what I'll do is I'll now supply that 5 volts to... 555 here, that's what I've done there. The negative part of the circuit's connected there. And let's uh, see if we can detect anything uh, on the output, which is this uh, yellow wire here. And yeah, we're getting about 6 point something um, millivolts. Uh, the, the other thing that we can do is we can also um, check the current drain of the circuit. So to do that, I'm now going to move uh, positive lead into the 10 amp position here, and I'm going to select amps, and it just warns you there. Now, in amp mode, we're using this socket. So what I'm going to do here is take that um, connection back out so we can put the meter in, um, in series uh, with the supply. So that, that's the positive, and that's the supply. And so the 555 is drawing about just over 4 milliamps. 
you can see there. Um, now I know there's been a bit of confusion about this, but if you now go to the milliamp socket and select milliamps uh, here, like so, and do the same thing again, I didn't mean to press AC, apologies, it's DC, here we go, I pressed it for too long. And you can see there we've now got 4068 microamps, or if you want to move the decimal point along, that's just over 4 milliamps of current being drawn. So, what I'm now going to do is put the circuit back to how it was, so I'll disconnect that. Um, and now we'll actually explore the circuit using the other function of this meter, which is the oscilloscope. So let's go to oscilloscope mode, and you can spot um, that line there, um, up there, which is actually, I'm just going to adjust that, because that's actually the, um, the trigger position. And I'll want to make use of that later, but I'll bring that down uh, till it's in line with the... Um, Trying to get zero volts there, yeah. Okay, so we'll go back to volume and time. So first thing we're going to do is let's have a look at the incoming AC supply. To do that, I need to move um, the negative lead. So let's just have a look at this incoming AC supply. And there's clearly something going on there. So we'll press auto range. And we've obviously got a, a waveform there. We can... Um, got 50, 50 hertz and it's saying about 11 volts um, uh, maximum 22 volts peak to peak um, which, which does make sense just a uh, point to note here is that um, it's definitely worth if we go back to sorry we go there if we select menu this gives us another set of menus and make sure your probe is set to the same as the actual setting on the probe if you've not already done that I'm using times 10 it is correct I was just double checking that so menu takes you back to where you were before so we've definitely got incoming AC let's have a look at what we've got on the output side of the bridge rectifier which is going to be I'm going to actually put it there so we're, in, we're DC coupled here, so you can hopefully see that everything is above the line. We can raise that up there, and that's saying about 10.47 volts, but you might recall earlier when we measured this with the voltmeter, before we included any of the rest of the circuitry, we were getting about 6.5 volts, and when we included the rest of the circuitry, that went up. So just draw your attention, if I can get... I'm going to move it to AC coupling so we can um, have a bigger waveform on the screen. Well, I'm going to try to anyway. Ah, there we go, back to adjustment there. So there's your bigger waveform so we can see it a little bit better. So this is the output of the bridge rectifier. So we've got full wave rectification. Now I'm going to include the smoothing capacitor, which is 100 microfarads, and um, the voltage regulator. It's not under load yet, but I'm going to just include it there. And straight away that big ripple that you were seeing has vanished. Now that uh, appears to be reading zero, but in fact if you go to DC coupling, that's now gone off the scale. Let's bring that, um, bring that back down a little bit. There we go. Uh, so we're at 5 volts for division, uh, which means that's just under 10 volts. So you may remember we've got about 9.5 volts on the meter once we included that circuit. So what's going on here is if I take that out again, uh, the meter is measuring the, if you like, the average voltage, and that's obviously, there's a lot of holes there, for want of a better um, uh, description, because none of the holes are being filled in by the smoother capacitor. Incidentally, if you want to get that to trigger properly, what you can drop onto the trigger menu here. If you move the trigger up a little bit, it will actually um, cause the, the waveform to stabilise because it's uh, 
this is rectified DC and it's all above it's all above the line so to speak so we go back down there onto zero go back to volume and time right so including the smoothing capacitor instantly makes a big difference and we can see yeah I've still got a little bit of noise but on the whole yeah that's absolutely fine so the next thing we checked was the output of the regulator so let's do that and you can hopefully see that it's 5 volts per division we are indeed getting 5 volts we think we're getting 4.992 or something on the meter function let's just up that line that's 2 volts per division so you can see we've got 2 4 just under 5 volts there so that, that, that's a green nicely um, now what I'm going to do here is um, I'll go back to the part of the circuit which was just before the bridge sorry just before the voltage regulator and we can see there we've got the uh, voltage going into the regulator just under 9 volts let's now um, power up the main part of the circuit by connecting that jumper and as you can see straight away there's a bit of noise been introduced by um, including the rest of the circuit now that's probably some stuff leaking through from the from the 555 but you can see that it is getting back um, through the voltage regulator and so clearly it's not a um, totally clean supply so potentially that's something you might want to think about in terms of um, putting some kind of capacitor in to filter that out however that's well beyond what we're doing here so now what we'll do remember we had a, a millivolt reading output from the output of the 555 let's, so let's see what we've got and we've clearly got something um, it certainly changed from its simple display there to that so we'll use the auto range function again here we'll just press that it says auto setting and it now works through its settings and eventually we get a waveform and you can see we've got uh, a series of pulses there let's reduce the size so you can see them so we've got about 41 kilohertz and we've got a voltage of about three and a half volts peak um, now the reason we were only getting millivolts measured is if you think about the if what effectively is the duty cycle there it's actually clearly a lot lower hence the, the the millivolt reading on the meter but we get the um the truth when we look at um, what's going on here with the um actual waveform itself so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move the probe to the last part of the circuit and this bit of circuit here which is a coil and a capacitor we're going to include those in the output of the 555 and hopefully modify the waveform and there we have something that approximates a sine wave now the purists are going to say well, it's not is it really and you're right it's not um, the top half certainly is but the bottom half isn't and now uh, need to be a bit careful here because currently this meter is in AC coupling mode and if I now go to DC coupling you'll see straight away things shoot up off the scale so let's just bring that uh, oops, go back to volume and time let's bring that down to something more sensible and we can stabilize that by um, just moving the trigger up to there so that stabilized the display so what you've actually got here bear in mind the yellow mark is zero you haven't really got a, a sine wave this is simply uh, positive going pulses and that's what's coming out of the 555 so the coil and the capacitor are producing th something which um, approximates to a sine wave it's certainly very different to the square wave that actually comes out of the chip itself so just be aware of that if you go to ac coupling that's going to drift back down now and for all the all the world that looks like it goes above the line and below the line um, actually it doesn't in dc coupling as you can see um, it stays up there it's it's always above the line which is the yellow mark the green mark there is the trigger so hopefully uh, that's making uh, some sense and you've seen the meter used in the various modes what's worth bearing in mind here is that wherever you are if you press menu you get a set of um, different functions there on the keys and there's a little arrow there which you can go 
right and you can even go right again so you've got options here to look at the software version this is um, when you want to use the scope in storage mode if you want to um, get the pictures off uh, which I, I did show in the first video um, that resets things and this is a, a calibration um, uh, menu there uh, so if we go back we've got more measurements and we've got backlight adjustment we've got the auto off on the language but more measurement if I press that gives us another set of another line of measurements um, so it gives us uh, the RMS voltage the minimum um, and it also gives us the the period in microseconds um, period is one over the frequency so the reciprocal of the frequency um, which is a handy measurement to have uh, so if we just pop that onto the no I need to use the scope to do that here yeah, yeah we're getting period of 24 0.8 microseconds if you were to find the reciprocal of that you'd find it was 40.2 kilohertz so yeah just bear in mind there's those menus there and pressing menu again takes you back i'll leave the, the fuller display on so function one when you want to do things one of the easy mistakes to make here is go to another menu there say change the coupling to to ac and then you start trying to alter the um the amplitude or, or the or the input of the Y amplifier if you like in reality what you need to do is go back to what's shown there as vol stroke time where these keys uh, that becomes the Y amplifier and these two become the the time base so there we go hopefully we've gone through um, most of the functions there and we've done it on a on a real live circuit there wasn't really much point to this other than um, just to, to show you the instrument in action but yeah, you can actually pretty much use that as your lab instrument. It's allowed us to, to look at all sorts of things. And ironically, when I was building this circuit, I actually used the meter to find a fault because I built the power supply, everything was fine. And the 555 wasn't producing an output. And um, these breadboards are pretty ancient, probably a bit worn out. And actually, uh, a couple of the pins on the IC weren't making contact properly. Uh, and I was able to eventually discover that and actually see the, see the output actually starting to work on the scope. So there we go. Um, that's the Zoe ZD702S in action. OK, well, there you have the Zotec ZT702S in use. Uh, I'm working on a, a real circuit and when I made that uh, particular bench video uh, I was going to cut out some of the bits where I'd got things wrong or I'd um, pressed the wrong button or whatever and I thought no it's best if I actually don't do that so um, you can see some of the little um, uh, slip ups that I was making hopefully if you get one of these meters you can um, you can avoid it yourself um, so I hope that's been useful um, and I'm also aware that yeah okay it was about um, a meter I've been sent to review but also there was quite a lot there about, about power supplies and rectification and uh, what you can do with 555 timers so hopefully uh, that's been interesting to more than just people who are thinking of getting one of these particular instruments Thanks very much for watching, look forward to seeing you on the next video.